Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I love you, Lord. Lord. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Lord, I love you. Amen. Well, today I'm going to go into a number of areas of study today. I will talk about what does the Holy Spirit do. Number two, the method of Gentile salvation. Jesus and the Father are one. The, war the warfare of spirit-filled believers. Jesus discusses the unity with his Father. The promise of the Spirit. The resurrection ministry of Christ. The resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, I want to pause for a moment and talk about the Holy Spirit. What does the Holy Spirit do? It applies the work of Christ to each other, to each believer. The Holy Spirit will be with believers. Jesus will live with each of us through his spirit. Why? To teach us and to remind us of his words, convict us of sin, show us God's righteousness, announce God's judgment on evil, guide us unto truth, Give us insight into the future and bring glory to Christ. Those or we to hear Christ's words. The Holy Spirit gives assurance of God's love and guidance for all of life. If you have your Bibles, let's go to John chapter 14. John chapter uh 14, 6, and it says, in verse 6 it says, Jesus said unto him, who is the him? Thomas, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. And in verse 5 of that same chapter, Jesus speaking to Thomas, because Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? And Jesus, and Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, and that me is Jesus Christ. Amen? If we go to Acts chapter 9, verse 2, it talks about the method of Gentile salvation. And when you speak about Gentiles... A person who's not a Jew. For example, Cornelius was considered by Christians to be the first Gentile which converted to the faith as relating to Acts of the Apostles. And so, and continuing on, talking about Jesus and the Father are one. In John 14, 7, it says, If ye had known me, ye should have known my Father also. And from henceforth ye know him and have seen him. And 1 John 2, 13. If John is considered the author historically by evidence. But in verse 13, it says, I write unto you, fathers, because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I write unto you, young men, because ye have overcame the wicked one. I write unto you, little children, because ye have known the Father. We know Jesus is the Son of God. In 1 John 2, 14, I have written unto you fathers because ye have known him that is from the beginning. I have written unto you, young men, because ye are strong and the word of God abideth in you and ye have overcome the wicked one. 
Those that are wicked. If you are evil and wicked and mean, well, the word clearly says in John 5, 38. And ye have not, and ye have not his word abiding in you, for whom he has sent, ye believe not. So if you believe not, excuse me, get me a drink of water. If you believe not, you're the wicked one. I want to talk about the warfare of spiritual field believers. What is warfare? Fighting against works of evil. Fighting against it. And how do we do that? In John and Ephesians 6.10. Finally, my brethren, be strong in the Lord. And in the power of his might, not your own might, we need the power of Jesus to help us be strong in him. In John 14, 8, going back to John chapter 14, verse 8, Philip saith unto him, Lord, show us the Father as it sufficeth us. And this is what Jesus replied. Jesus saith unto him, have I seen so long time with you and yet? Has thou not known me, Philip? He that has sent me have seen the Father. And how says then, then then show us the Father. He's talking to Philip. How says, show us the Father. When, you, when you've seen Christ Jesus, you've seen his Father also because they are one. Now I want to discuss something for a moment. I want to talk about um, in further verses of John chapter 14, 10 through 12. I want to bring out some points, and the points are, Jesus discusses the unity with his Father. I believe that that is an issue in America today, that between son and father, or daughter and son, there's lack of unity. Jesus discusses the unity with his Father. Jesus issues a call to faith, reminding them that only God could do the works that Jesus has done. Jesus explains that those who believe in him will do his same works and even greater ones. The word greater indicates the idea of greater in depth. What could be greater than raising the dead? Let's ponder of that for a moment. What could be greater than what Christ did in raising the dead? Simply this. Preaching the gospel of eternal life. In John 14, 10 through 12, Jesus is speaking and says, in verse 10, Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwelleth in me, he doeth the works. So Jesus is clearly stating here that the works he has done God did it through him. And Jesus could do nothing, do nothing without God. Do we have the same mentality that we can't do anything without Jesus because we need him? I know I do. I need Jesus each and every day of my life, every second, every moment, every hour. I need Jesus. I rely on Jesus. Before I take my steps, I pray about a matter in terms of what shall I do, Lord? In verse 11 and 12, it says, Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Verse 12. Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that believeth on me, the works that I do shall he do also. And greater works then these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. In John 14, verse 13, it says, Jesus is speaking, and he says, And whatsoever ye shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. Hallelujah. Ask it in his name. You want Jesus to do it? Ask it in the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And believe it shall be. In John 14, 14, if ye, shall, if ye shall 
ask anything in my name, I will do it. Hallelujah. I believe the word of God that God will do it. I believe that the Lord will protect our children, our grandchildren, our relatives, locally and abroad. And I know so much has gone on with that pa the pandemic, the COVID-19. But through it all, I've learned to trust in Jesus. And this is the one thing that we all need to do. In John 14, 15, it says, If you love me, keep my commandments. If you go to Exodus chapter 20, entirety, it explains all the Ten Commandments. I want to talk about the promise of the Spirit. In John 14, 16, And I will pray. Jesus is speaking. He says, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. We need Jesus. And he's given us his Holy Spirit, his Spirit which is to comfort us. I want to talk about the resurrection ministry of Christ. In Acts chapter 1, 3, and 4, to whom also he showed himself alive after his passion by, by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is definitely explained in Luke chapter 24. In Luke chapter 24, I want to spend some time there. So let's please go there. In Luke chapter 24, it talks about the ministry of the risen Christ. And it starts out like this. In verse 24, verse 1. I'm sorry, verse 13. And behold, two of them went that same day to a village called Emmaus, which was from Jerusalem, that about three score furlongs. And they talked together of all these things which, he ha which had happened. What had happened? Well, let's go in the Word of God and talk about it. In verse 15 of Luke chapter 4 of 24, And it came to pass that while they communed together and reasoned, Jesus himself drew near and went with them. But their eyes were holding that they should not know him. That's doubt right there. Verse 17. And he said unto them, What manner of communications are these that ye have one to another as ye walk and are sad? If you know Christ Jesus, we ought not to be sad. We ought, re we ought to rejoice that we know Jesus Christ and we have the confidence. We can be comforted. In verse 18, and the one of them, whose name was Cleopas, answering, said unto him, Art thou only a stranger in Jerusalem, talking to Jesus, and hast not known the things which are come to pass therein these days? And he said unto them, Jesus said, What things? And they said unto him, Jesus, concerning Jesus of Nazareth, which was a prophet, mighty indeed, were and were before God and all the people. This is what they're saying. And how the chief priest and our rulers delivered him to be condemned to death and have crucified him. Verse 21. But we trusted that it had been he which should have redeemed Israel. And beside all this, today is the third day since these things were done. And we know the third day he got up. Verse 22, yea, and a certain woman also of our company astonished us, made us astonished, which were early at the sepulchre. And when they found not his body, speaking of Jesus' body, they came saying that they had also seen a vision of angels which said that he was alive. Verse 24, and certain of them which were with us went to the sepulchre, and found it even so as the women had said. My daughter Corinne has come in listening to the word of God. Praise the Lord, Corinne. But him they saw not. Then he said unto them, O fools, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Ought not Christ to have suffered these things? 
and to enter into his glory. Christ had to be crucified. It was a purpose. It was a reason. If Christ had not been crucified and, and had risen the third day, none of us would be here today. But because of Christ Jesus, we have an opportunity to receive eternal life, everlasting life. We have the opportunity to live before Christ like never before. We have the opportunity to get, get it right. In verse 26, it says, uh, And beginning at Moses and all the prophets, he expounded unto them and all the scriptures and things concerning himself. And they drew nigh unto the village, whether they went, and he made as though he would have gone further. But they constrained him, meaning holy Jesus, saying, Abide with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is far spent. And it came to pass, as he sat at meal with them, he took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to them. And we know that's part of the Holy Communion. So in verse 31, And their eyes were open, and they knew him. And he vanished out of their sight. <coughs> Which is the disciples. And they said one to another. Did not our heart burn within us. While he talked with us. By the way. And while he opened to us the scriptures. And they rose up the same hour. And returned to Jerusalem. And found the eleven gathered together. And them that were with them. Saying the Lord is risen indeed. And have appeared to Simon. And they told him what things were done in the way and how he was known of them in breaking a bread. And they, and as they thus spake, Jesus himself stood in the midst of them and saith unto them, Peace be unto you. Peace. Peace be unto you. But they were terrified and frightened and supposed that they had seen a spirit. And he said unto them, Jesus speaking, Why are you troubled? And why do thoughts arise in your hearts? Behold my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Handle me, see me, for a spirit have not flesh and bones, as ye, as ye, as ye seen as you see me have. Forgive me, you guys. I have on a different pair of eyeglasses and they, they kind of do me an injustice, but pray for me. Verse 40. And when he had thus spoken, he showed them his hands and feet. And while they yet believed not for joy and wonder, he said unto them, Have ye here any meat? And they gave him a piece of broiled fish and of a honeycomb. And he took it and he did eat before them, and he said unto them, These are the words which I spake unto you while I was yet with you, that all things must be fulfilled, which were written in the law of Moses, and in the prophets, and in the Psalms concerning me. Then opened he their understanding, that they might understand scriptures. And he said unto them, Thus it is written, and thus it behooved Christ to suffer and to, and to rise from the dead the third day. And now he sits on the throne and he's an advocator for you and I that we may have everlasting life. There's that mercy and there's that grace in Christ Jesus. In verse 47. And that repentance. This is the reason why Christ had to be crucified. In verse 47. Key points here. And that repentance. And remission of sins. Should be preached. In his name. Among all nations. Beginning at Jerusalem. And behold. I send the promise. Of my father upon you. The promise. Upon you. But tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye be endued with the power from on high. Do you recognize his power in your life, his spirit in your life? That you can do the work that God has called you to do? You know, someone told me a while back, not that I didn't know it, but just reaffirmed to me that I'm on an assignment. 
We are all on an assignment when it comes to preaching the gospel of the kingdom. And if Christ has given you that assignment, my little grandbaby, you can see here yelling in the background. Christ has given us an assign assignment to preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. And so I want to assure us, and reading on in verse 50, just assure us that Christ is. In verse 50 it says, and he led them out as far as to Bethany, and he lifted up his hands and blessed them. We ought to get to a place in our lives with the, pure, with the power of Christ that we ought to lift up our hands and pray over our children and pray over our grandchildren and pray over our family members that the Lord would just continue to endow us with his power, which is his Holy Spirit and the comforter that is in our lives of believers, of believers of Christ Jesus. In verse 51, and it came to pass while he blessed them, he was parted from them and carried up into the heaven. Hallelujah. We need to speak blessings over our family members. Speak the blessings over our family members. Blessings, 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 blessings over our family members. Mercy and grace be upon our families, our children. Mercy and grace. Verse 52, and they worship him and return to Jerusalem with great joy. And were continually in the temple, and were continually in the temple, praising and blessing God. We need to continue to praise God. We need to continue to bless the Lord thy God. We need to spend time saying it out of our mouths, blessing his name, encouraging ourselves in the word of God. Let's go to 1 John. This particular chapter talks about the family with the father. It talks about fellowship. The family with the father. In verse 6, if we say that we have fellowship with him, Christ Jesus, and walk in darkness, we lie and do not the truth. Verse 7, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship one with another. And the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanseth us from all sin. We are cleansed. Eight, if we say that we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. Verse nine. If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all our righteousness. If we say that we have not sinned, we make him a liar. And his word is not in us. Let's go to Romans chapter 10, 9 and 10. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus Christ, and shalt believe in thy heart that God hath raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness. And with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. Verse 11. For the scripture saith, Whosoever believeth on him shall not be ashamed. Shall not be ashamed. Hallelujah. So I want to go back to my points that I spoke about earlier today. I spoke about what does the Holy Spirit do? And in that, I will give that again just to make sure we got it. What does the Holy Spirit do? It applies the work of Christ to each believer. The Holy Spirit will be with believers. Jesus will live with each of us through his spirit. Teach us and remind us of his words. Convict us of sin. Shows us God's righteousness. Announce God's judgment on evil. Guide us unto truth. Give us insight into the future and bring glory to Christ. To those that hear Christ's words, the Holy Spirit gives assurance of God's love and guidance for all of life. Hallelujah. 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 Oh, we thank you. 
Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Lord, we thank you. Uplift him. Lord, we uplift your name. 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 Lord, we thank you. 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 Let's pray. Jesus, have mercy. Jesus, have mercy. Thank you, Lord, that you left us a comforter. Thank you, Lord, that you've taught us to believe in you. You've taught us to be part of you, to know your word, to be a believer. Thank you, Lord, that you taught us how to walk in your word, believe the word, trust the word. We thank you for endurance. We thank you for strength. I pray for those under the sound of my voice, Lord, that you continue to e e equip them with the word of God. Equip them, Lord, that we are not to be ashamed of the gospel, that we ought to know Jesus Christ personally and that we ought to mm, confess our sins because he is just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. But, Lord, I stand to give you all the power. I give you all the praise and the glory.